welcome back to Weird Car History, the show where I enlighten your mind on some of the weirdest, uncommon cars to ever hit the road. Last week we analyzed the Hummer H3T, and for episode 4, I present to you a true anomaly, one of the most outlandishly designed cars ever produced, the Chevrolet SSR. If you're new to Weird Car History, here's the drill. I'm going to tell you what the SSR was, explain its oddities, analyze why it was a flop, give you some sales figures, and to conclude, if I can convince you to want one of these, I'll be showing you some SSRs currently on the market if you want to give one a home. The SSR debuted in 2003, and was quickly met with mixed opinions. Though the SSR was notably bizarre, it did arrive during a weird era when American car manufacturers were attempting modern throwbacks. The SSR launched one year after the discontinuation of the similarly outlandish Plymouth Prowler, and one year after the rebirth of the Ford Thunderbird. At its original launch, the SSR featured a 5.3 liter V engine which produced 300 horsepower and featured a 4 speed automatic transmission. Fun fact, this engine happens to be the same engine that was used in the Hummer H3T Alpha as seen in last episode. However, for the 2005 model year, Chevrolet amped the SSR's power by adding a 6 liter V8 which produced 390 horsepower, nearly 100 more horsepower than the prior two years. Beyond the stronger engine, 2005 SSRs also came with an optional 6 speed manual transmission, making 2005 and 6 SSRs a bit more valuable than the older ones. One drawback of the SSR though was its price tag. Back in 2003, the SSR started at about $42,000, which translates to about $63,600 in 2022 without including options. Although I love the SSR, that's a lot to ask for a vehicle with a very narrow market. And for those of you wondering what SSR means, it stands for Super Sport Roadster. The one thing I am always amazed at is the fact that the SSR got approved for production in the first place. Regardless of the era, this is an odd looking car. The amount of time, people, and approvals to mass produce a vehicle is insane. First of all, someone needed to theorize and design the SSR, successfully pitch it to their managers, who then had to approve of it so much that they needed to tell their bosses, who then needed to tell engineers, who then needed to tell manufacturers, who then probably tell their bosses, all the way up the ladder to the executives who determine which cars GM will produce. And somehow, the SSR made it all the way up the food chain, through all the approvals of GM executives, and into the production lines and onto our driveways. And I am so glad that it did. It will never fail to amaze me that something this weird, so random, so absurd was able to be produced on a mass level. This would never fly today. Though some electric cars are certainly atypical, I would be shocked if something this bizarre were to be approved today. SSR was a combination of the forces of nature. Let's suppose Chevy was trying for the all-in-one vehicle. The SSR is a pickup truck, muscle coupe, which also featured a hardtop convertible roof. As far as its absurd design goes, the front end of the SSR is based off the Chevy Advance Design pickup series from the late 1940s, giving the SSR a retro look. The SSR also had massive fender flares, which gave it more of a beefy muscle car look. Then the SSR had a fairly large pickup truck bed. Combine all of these design features and you have the masterpiece that is the Chevy SSR. One thing I will add is Chevy truly made some great colors for the SSR. The SSR is one of those cars that looks great in practically any color, maybe due to its retro design or bizarre styling. Some of these iconic colors include Redline Red, Slingshot Yellow, Pacific Blue Metallic, Aqua Blur Metallic, and my personal favorite, Ultraviolet Metallic. Again, as you can see from the photos, in terms of exterior colors, General Motors nailed the color options for the SSR. And just to reiterate, the best engine option for the SSR was a 6 liter V8 which produced 390 horsepower, which was offered from 2005 to 2006. And as far as the interior goes, it was simplistic enough for a 2000 GM vehicle, although the SSR did come standard with large, comfortable looking black leather seats. So why did the SSR fail? Well, as one might expect, the SSR had an extremely narrow target market. While certain individuals want a convertible or a muscle car or a truck, most people don't want a combination of the three. To many, the SSR was too impractical for a pickup truck or too bizarre to be a sport or a muscle car. And given that the SSR looked more like a concept car produced by Hot Wheels rather than General Motors, the SSR drew polarizing remarks. To put it bluntly, there was little demand for the SSR. Beyond this, despite the SSR's absurdity, it was an expensive vehicle. A starting price of over $60,000 when adjusted for inflation is a lot to ask for for a quirky machine like the SSR. And most people were either turned off by the high asking price, or they were simply unable to afford it. 
So after four years of dismal sales, Chevy pulled the plug on the SSR in 2006, leaving a brief but certainly memorable legacy. Although the SSR did not put up tremendous sales figures, it did sell better than one may expect, as Chevy sold about 23,400 SSRs over the span of four production years. When you compare the SSR's sales figures to the other vehicles featured on Weird Car History, the SSR actually ranks first, surpassing the Kia Borrego by about 800 units. However, while the SSR may have sold better than one may have expected, these numbers aren't good in terms of annual sales, which was a factor in the SSR's cancellation. Alright, so if I convince you to want SSR of your own, you have a surprisingly large selection of 233 SSRs to choose from nationwide in the United States, according to Cargroups as of January 23, 2022. The lowest mileage you can get is only 133 original miles, with the highest holding over 132,000 miles. I will add, despite the crazy used car market at the moment, SSRs hold their values extremely well, with many SSRs offering the 6 liter V8 or manual transmission appreciating in value. I honestly would not be surprised if the SSR becomes a collector's item in the coming years, although it already seems to be. The best deal I saw was about $40,000 for a 2 owner, 5400 mile SSR offered in smoke and asphalt and featuring the 6 liter V8 and 6 speed manual transmission. While this may seem expensive for the best deal, it's the best price you'll find with the preferred SSR features and that little mileage. If you want the lowest mileage SSR, which has only 133 original miles, it will cost you about $42,500 for a 2 owner SSR also offered in smoke and asphalt and featuring the 5.3 liter V8. I guess both owners must have kept it in the garage and never drove it for preservation. And if you want the highest mileage SSR, it will set you back about $18,000 for a 1 owner 132,000 mile SSR offered in Redline Red and offering the 5.3 liter V8. So with that, into the oblivion goes the SSR. While the SSR drew mixed response, one cannot deny that it is one of the most bizarre looking vehicles ever produced. You know a car is special when it turns heads for even non-enthusiasts, and that's exactly what the SSR did. The SSR is one of my favorite cars of the 2000s, and I hope you enjoyed learning about the SSR as much as I did. I'll never fail to be amazed that this car was actually mass produced. I do give General Motors a lot of credit though. They took a chance with a car that has a lot more character and strays far away from the expectations of a traditional vehicle, despite it being weird and controversial. Anyways, if any of you watching own an SSR and live in the New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New York region, I'd love to film a review and feature your SSR on my channel, so feel free to reach out. Other SSR owners, I would love to hear stories about personal ownership and reliability, so feel free to enlighten us in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching the fourth episode of Weird Car History. Please let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, I'd love to hear any feedback that you have. And if you have a request for a car you want to see on Weird Car History, drop it in the comments below, and maybe I'll make a video of it. Thank you again for watching, and stay tuned for more videos down the road.